we're late, we're late, we're late. We're on air. Are we on air? Yes. We're live. We're live. So they can see me. They, they can, can see, see they you. They can hear you. They can it's hear good. me. Sorry, guys, we're running late today. By Not, two minutes. By two minutes. <laughs> Neither <laughs> one of us has had our poop in a group this morning. Uh, <laughs> we've got uh, a really fun project for you today. But before we get to that, we're going to uh, do our shout out of the week, which is going to www.bookoutlet.ca. Now, I have been dealing with these guys for a little while. I'm an absolute book addict. I love my books. I still, even though I have an e-reader, I still love my books to have a book in my hand. I love the smell of books, the feel of books. I can walk around in a bookstore for hours on end. I absolutely love books. And bookoutlet.ca is perhaps my favorite place to get books. And I'll tell you why. One, a great selection. And two, the prices are incredible. Now, um, I have a minor obsession with <laughs> reference books and art books. As you probably know, most of us are in the same boat. But I got to show you, I got a box this week. Happy mail. Happy mail. Big time happy mail. Uh, bookoutlet.ca is um, kind of like a clearance center for books. And so you can get a large variety of books, everything from, your, you know, your favorite Harlequin romances to technical books and and everything in between and uh, all I did was hit art typed art in the search engine and whew, did I score so uh, this one uh, this is a Tamara Laporte she's a mixed media artist she does beautiful beautiful work very colorful her books are really informative lots and lots of instruction um, they are however or can be I should say a little on the pricey side um, but uh, they this one retails at $30 and I paid less than four. So great deal on a Tamara Laporte book. I have a couple of her of others of hers that I really enjoyed. This one was a bit of a coup. This is a mixed media workshop book. Tons of information in here. Oodles of great ideas, lots of fun techniques, etc. And again, huge deal, huge deal. But the one that hit it out of the park for me, I love reference books, especially for colored pencil, which is, as you know, a minor obsession with me. Um, I got this one. This is a National Geographic. It's called The Splendor of Birds. Beautiful up-close photography in this. Gorgeous book. Retails close to 100 bucks. I didn't pay anywhere near that. So that was another fun one. And then this one was Botanical Art huge this is like a 95 dollar book and um i paid less than 20 for it so if you really love books and you're looking for lots of them it's one of those sites that go back to on a regular basis check them out hit a search if you're looking for something in specific and just check out this website one once you hit a certain dollar amount your shipping is free which is big deal when you're talking about books because these suckers get heavy but uh, <laughs> go and check them out so that is my shout out for the week is bookoutlet.ca i absolutely love their website i can spend lots of money on there without spending <laughs> lots of money on there so it's a great site um i also got happy mail this week uh oh who sent you stuff? did I, well i got a, a box of goodies last week from sheila and um, she got me this. This is a Ranger black paper journal. Wait, so Sheila sent this? Mm -hmm. So my girl Sheila, God love her. I just, she she knows me too well. We kind of bolster each other's obsessions. <laughs> so uh... she, she contacted me because she'd found some new graphite pencils or charcoal pencils and um, I already had them. So one thing led to another. Anyway, I got a great little box in the mail and it had this ranger journal in it. it's black paper <laughs> and now i'm obsessed with white pencils <laughs> and white markers and white gel pens so um that's going to be a new thing for me to play with will be that book so thank you very much sheila uh the link for the uh website is down in the description yep yeah so if you're looking at Actually, if there's a bunch of links in the description. Yeah, there is a bunch. It kind of grows uh, after a while. There's uh, our shout out, which is bookoutlet.ca. Yep. And then there's Sheila Landry. There's uh, Sandy McTeer. Sandy McTeer. Painting with Deb. Painting with Deb. All sorts yep. of people. So 
Check out the description. Click yep. on the links. Say hi to some friends. The brush guys. There's a whole bunch of things oh, in yeah, there. Yeah, the brush guys. <laughs> yeah. Whenever we try to, um, whenever we come across a website that I think is going to be of value to you, um, we try to stick it in there so that because it's really tough these days to find supplies. So you go to your local Michael store, and it's still pretty slim picking some days. So. Um, uh, speaking of Michaels, I got a great deal. They got a sale on this week. Uh, they're they have the hardboard panels that I like to use. Those um, cradled artist cradles, and I got a stack of eight by eights in the hardboard panels in there for a great deal. They came in a pack of six, and I think they were under twenty bucks. So a really great deal to get those panels because they are not cheap. They're not easy to find. So if you're looking for them, they're coming in a pack of six. You can get those at your local Michael's store. And if you can't find them in the store, go online, use your coupon, order them there. Apparently Jessica couldn't handle the 30 second delay from the chat and her big screen TV. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so she's watching you on the big screen, but the chat's a little faster than. Okay her phone <laughs> so, so i she's... think she's going to be watching either on the phone or her laptop <laughs> um giveaways today Ooh, we yeah. have some some really cool giveaways today uh we've got uh tombow pencil sets and uh, of course then we had to do a little something something and we threw in um a nice little pencil pouch for you that says craftgasm so there's some craftgasm pencil pouches, uh, a set of pencils from Tombow, mm -hmm. and uh, there I think there's even a little pin kit in there too. So there's a bunch of goodies in there for our giveaways today. We have three of them. Next week, next Saturday, mm -hmm. we have a really cool giveaway. Mm -hmm. We have a, a set. They're beautiful. They retail for like twenty three dollars each we have three of them to give away what, what, what? tombow watercolor markers we have sets three sets of them to give away next week Damn. so um we're going to be painting um i've had so many requests for this one um i don't know if any if any of you saw it keiko ameda posted her uh sweet peas piece this week up on uh, facebook absolutely gorgeous she instead of using the traditional pink and, and the violet colors she went with coral tones and bits of orange and it's absolutely gorgeous and because of that i have been inundated with messages <laughs> can we have this sweet pea please okay sweet peas it is so next saturday we're going to teach we're going to paint the sweet peas i love that piece i just kind of held off on it because i had taught it for a group and i wanted you know, a good length of time between. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and teach Sweet Peas next week. And the giveaways for that uh, class are going to be a gorgeous set. It's a 10-piece marker set uh, from Tombow. Um, in their their uh, w favorite watercolor colors. Absolutely phenomenal. And uh, we'll talk about that and we'll even play a little bit. Uh, the other thing I was going to tell you, we've got the... You have that puzzled look on your face. I'm wondering if that uh, uh, thing you did yesterday is available yet. The thing I did yesterday. Oh, no, it isn't. Two no. weeks. No. Uh, in two weeks? Yeah, in okay. two weeks. Um, two weeks from now, I'm going to, uh, we'll post a link for it as soon as it comes available. Um, but for Art Supply Insiders... Um, is a podcast um, for the art industry, the craft industry. They asked me to do an interview with them. So <laughs> um, that's what I did yesterday afternoon. So that'll be up in about two weeks. But I'll post the link so you guys can go have a listen. Ah, okay. I didn't know if you were allowed to talk about oh, it. Oh, or... sure. Okay. Yep. So what what is it called? It's called Art Supply Insiders. Ah, there you go. So it's a great little podcast. If you want to go and check them out, uh, all you have to do, click on... <laughs> artsupplyinsiders.com. I might have to add another link to the description. Yeah, you might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, we now have the uh, cupboard distributing collage stencils are available uh, on our website. Uh, we've had such a great feedback about them that we're going to actually add a few more. Um, your fr friend uh, Kiko Yumada? Kiko Umeda. Umeda? Keiko. Keiko. Yeah. Yep. She's she's in the chat. 
Is she? Yeah. I just, the job she did on those sweet peas is just beautiful. Yeah. She says, thank you so much for the compliment and your help. Oh, it was nothing. Just told her a couple of colors. That's it. The rest is all on her. <laughs> she did a beautiful job. So we're going to uh, do the sweet peas next week uh, that covered the collage stencils. I've been having a blast with those. I got my shipment in, and then when I opened it up, there was a bag full of new stencils that they've got. And uh, so now I have to play with all of those. But now I also have to expand the number of stencils that we bring in from them because they've been... Uh, We've been seeing your guys' orders. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the stencils are doing very well. We're really, really pleased. Um, I wanted to have them uh, because the shipping for a lot of this stuff is really expensive coming out of the U.S. for Canadian customers. So I wanted to have some for our uh, Canadian painters because they like the, to the new toys too, but sometimes the shipping is just brutal. Yeah. So and it's not exclusive to Canadian no, customers. No, can anybody <laughs> that wants them can order them. And we've tried to keep the prices close to theirs as possible. Yeah. So, um, so that we're not you know, competing. I don't want to compete. We we lots of room in this industry for everybody. Uh, what else? There was something else. Oh, um, we posted a new printable this week too. I was blown away by the number of downloads. It over a thousand downloads of that new printable this week. Nice. So, which is great. So I, I'm really excited about those. Um, somebody had asked me about <laughs> how I came up with those printables. Well, it's because my brain doesn't stop working. Um, so when I'm sitting in the studio and I'm designing something, I usually design little bits and pieces and then I sort of move them around. And there's a lot of stuff that's sort of extraneous. I I don't use it in the, in the finished piece or I take it out of the line drawings or what have you. And so I'm left with all of these little bits and pieces and doodles. And I thought they're still functional. So I just tuck them into some simple generic shapes and that's how I ended up with these printables. And it's fun just to post them. You guys can do whatever you want with them. You know, do mixed media with them. You can uh, use them for your card making or scrapbooking or whatever you want to use them for. Knock yourself out. Even if you're into coloring, just sitting there and coloring, go for it. Um, so sitting here this morning, it's very quiet here. I'm not sure why. but uh, I was outside with the dog. Yeah. For most of the morning. Dad was at Home Depot. Yeah, Dad was at Home Depot. So I um, I spent the morning just doodling and uh, playing around with a couple of new ideas. And so. Tracy doesn't sleep. <laughs> oh, I do sleep. <laughs> the brain just doesn't sleep. I don't stop. know if you classify all. it as sleep. <laughs> 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 tomato, tomato. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'm having a lot of fun making sure, so, so making use of all of those little bits and bobs that I have left over uh, from some of the design work that I've been doing. And this has been a prolific week, a very prolific week. I was sick for almost three weeks, with stupid shingles. And then um, still wasn't feeling all that creative until this week. Yeah. And uh, this week I came up with six new designs. I still have three <laughs> I have to paint, but I came up with six new designs. So um, it's yeah. been a prolific week. Came up week. with six designs, painted three of them, put two up on the website. Yeah, three. The oh, you put stuff. all three on the website? <laughs> yeah, they're all up now. Yeah. And she's got three more to paint up and finish up the pattern? Yeah. Well, the patterns are pretty much written. And that's but... just this week. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm, I don't know. I'm catching up. That's what I'm doing. I was down for three weeks, so I didn't yeah, do you, anything. You, you, you spent your three weeks of recoup researching and looking at reference photos and going oh ah, yeah ooh. that's true sit there in, a, in my chair with a blankie and my ipad <laughs> that's research where do, where do we find the printables <laughs> the printables I, i've had so many questions about this if you go to the website click on the store where it says shop click the shop button and it'll take you to the store. You're going to see a bunch of stuff written at the top. Scroll down. On the left-hand side of the page, there is a menu. Go right to the bottom of the menu. There's a button there that says free printables. You can click on that and download all you like. <laughs> You're making up for lost time. I guess so. <laughs> you needed that break. I don't know that I needed it. I would have preferred to have done that on a beach somewhere with a margarita instead of 
antibiotics in a and she's not talking about a tropical beach she's talking like <laughs> any beach east coast canada pebble beach yeah pebble and she beach. would have been happy as a clam yep and eating clams and eating clams <laughs> yes. well no they're not really in season yet oh, no. but um <laughs> so yeah so it's been a prolific week i've done a few things one of the things you might have noticed in this the pattern that we're doing today that i did line drawings for two surfaces one for this rectangular one and then one for that uh, tomb tombstone panel the reason i did that was quite simply just so that people because you can't always get the exact surface and so just take the outer lines off and then find a surface that that fits in and it will work just fine but uh, I kind of like giving you options. And so sometimes some of the patterns are going to have multiple line drawings in them. And that's that's the reason why. So that you have some other options. This one is a lot of fun. This one is a lot of fun to do. Very forgiving. Very easy paint. Not a difficult one at all by any stretch. Um, however, it is a little bit labor intensive because you're going to be doing so many different things with it. So... Um, if you guys are ready to get started on our fleur de printemps, then so am I. <laughs> Your son sounds like such a nice guy. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Wait till you get to know me. <laughs> he is a nice guy. I'm a nice guy, but I'm a smart ass. Mm. <laughs> no argument here. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right, forget. I got to switch the cameras. You know what? Or short range apple <laughs> short range apple yeah <laughs> we just haven't figured out which tree he dropped off of okay. you gonna show him the piece yeah i yeah. am that would be helpful yeah Ta -da. Ta -da. this crazy. is a, um i wanted to do something that was fairly loose and fairly easy and uh, essentially this one is just one color and white that's it so we're using one color and white. That's how we're going to do this one. Super easy. Uh, I worked with transparent colors whenever possible. You'll notice the green I chose was margarita. Very transparent. Uh, same with the plantation pine. Very transparent. And then the color that we're using for this iris is diox purple, which is also a really transparent color. So, and I wanted, if you can see, um, I wanted some of that print work in the background and the stenciling and whatnot to come through. It gives this a really light and airy feel, but yet it's still got some substance. So, and then the addition of the postal stamp. I am obsessed with postage stamps lately. Mm. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what kicked it off, but I am absolutely obsessed. Now, um, uh, fortunately for us, you can Google almost anything. <laughs> yeah. And uh, careful what, the, what you Google. Yes, be very careful what you Google. Um, one of the things I did was um, I Googled a whole bunch of free images uh, and loaded them up. Um, essentially, these are postage stamps from can't. These are real stamps. We just used images of them uh, from Papua New Guinea, from India, um, from the Deutsche Demokratische Republik which, you know, East Germany. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta-da. Uh, from Canada, obviously. And then some gorgeous uh, floral stamps. I chose things that had colors that sort of marry in with the theme that I was doing. So if it had pinks and purples and, and yellows, then I was off to the races. And then I simply cut one of those out. I printed that off on my household printer. So we have a stamp. Ta-da. And that's just decoupaged on. So it's super easy. But it does lend a little extra to this. You only have to deal with one smart ass? No. I have four of them. No, she has to deal with three, three smart of them. ass. There's three of them. <laughs> and she can count herself in there too. Four. So. <laughs> yeah, but I'm easy to deal with. Yeah, you can deal with yourself. I can deal with myself. <laughs> so this is the set. Oh, what size surface is this? This one is a six by 12 art panel love this one yeah. oh do they get all three in the pattern uh no we have their individual patterns uh however we do have a deal on the three packs so there is a section on the website that has all three patterns that they get a deal on so i love these i just 
I had a picture in my head of how they would look. And every once in a while, the picture actually turns out. <laughs> this is what I wanted. This is exactly what I wanted it to look like. And I got it. So yay me. I managed to hit one out of the park this week. So this is what we're going to be doing today is the iris. Now the technique for this one is the for these, I should say, for all three of them, is exactly the same. We're just working with very thin layers of color. So it means diluting color quite a bit. So if you guys are ready to get started on this. This is rock and roll. How did you get all that edging on the stamps cut out? Edging scissors. Edging scissors. Oh, the little notches? Yeah. <laughs> They're actually in the photograph. <laughs> <laughs> are they? Yeah, they are. Look, you see? So they're actually in the photograph. I just trimmed it really close so that it looks like, yeah, that's how. Oh, she cheated. I didn't cheat. <laughs> didn't cheat. <laughs> so we've got uh, our panel here. This one is in a little rough shape. Um, so I'm going to give it a light sanding. I've got um, two coats of light buttermilk on this. I want to make sure the edges are smooth. Ooh, Faye Reed asks, are these similar to our next membership paint for April? Um, in some respects, yes. Um, however, we're using a completely different technique for the background and for the floral. So. Are we doing any um, faux textures later? Textures? Yeah. Yeah, we can do some. Just a thought. I love textures. I'm all about <laughs> textures. <laughs> you ran a store called the Faux Store. <laughs> so yeah, it dealt in faux finishing. Yeah, I love <laughs> faux finishes. So uh, this, you can, can you tell I've been working at this one a lot? Um this is one of the new um, cupboard distributing collage stencils that we got in. I love this one. It's called Postage Script. I love this one. It, remember the cancellation thing? What is it with me in these circles? I don't know. So uh, we're going to grab stencil brush. The color I'm going to use is Ashfaltum. Of course. <laughs> I didn't want black. Black would be too harsh. Will the stamp be included with the pattern as well? No. No. So, oh, the the uh, postage stamps? Yeah. Yes, they're in oh, the pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Never mind. I stand corrected. Yes, the stamps. There is a sheet. This sheet is included in the pattern. There you go. Yeah. Or you can go to the post office. <laughs> there's that <laughs> you see the price of a postage stamp no instead? kidding holy crap good friend of mine sent me uh some vinyls yeah and it was the first time i've ever seen him use a stamp yeah and the fact that it was an actual stamp surprised me yeah it was letter mail but yeah well I haven't seen a real stamp in a long time no, because we have the postage meter. Yeah, that's so. right, too. We just weigh and... Yeah. Whatever the noise thing makes. Yep. Yeah. It screams at me. And it beeps at you when it's overweight. Yeah, it I does. I didn't know. Uh -huh. It goes, no. Now our letter mail is going to be self-conscious. <laughs> so... I wanted this, you can do this any way you want. I wanted it fairly uh, solid so that it would show through. I kind of want it to peek through. So if it's too light, it kind of gets buried in the next couple of steps. But so I wanted it fairly dark. I just didn't want it black. I want it to look different from the decoupage paper or the collage paper, I should say. And this... I really like this stencil. This is just a creates a nice pattern. The quality of these is really nice too. It's a little heavier mylar. Oh, what? Jackson's sick. Oh no. Poor little one. 
So. Sorry to hear that, Karen. Oh. So I'm going to avoid this. Notice I put the stencil. I lined it up with the last row so that I get the spacing right. So it's it's just a me thing. I don't like the idea of it not being level. I have a thing about lettering not being level. It drives me nuts. It's like having a painting crooked on a wall. <laughs> that big long one in, in the uh, main floor bath. Yeah. <laughs> Gizmo hits it every day and i'm in there every day straightening that painting because <laughs> the cat he's special that's an understatement hey. the short bus hockey helmet special that one <laughs> <laughs> i love that cat he's just so different oh uh, Janine Marshall. I broke my leg last weekend. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, she. So now she absolutely has to stay home and paint. <laughs> you have no choice now. <laughs> yeah. You have to stay home, heal, and paint. Okay, so I've got my stencil done. Uh, I could ooh. dry this real quick. There are no stores in my area that have six by twelve boards. Yep. Uh, will it be too expensive shipping wise to order several from you? No, uh, no, shouldn't be. Do we have enough? I think we've got. Oh, we've only got two left. Yeah, we only got two left. If you're quick. Yeah. <laughs> They're fairly light. That's the nice thing. Yeah. About these. I do have some it also more depends coming. on where we're shipping it to. Yeah, but it's still they're fairly light. It's not too too bad. So I'm going to give this a light sanding. Just because I don't want any ridges or edges. And I kinda like the variation. Karen's gonna call you later. Uh okay. That's what she said. <laughs> He's tough but he'll be okay. I'll call you later. <laughs> there we go. So our next step is to put on our next layer for this. And uh, this is what I've been using is this entomology paper. I just love this one. Um, I had a couple of different ones, but. And oh, I put all of these on sale too this week. Just saying. Just... So. Mm -hmm. I tore off about 14 inches or so, and then I'm going to tear it on the diagonal. And you can decide how much or how little of this you want left exposed, that stenciling. So, and you can decide how much of the, you know, the butterfly or the bugs. Just move it along until you're happy with whatever textures you've got visually that is and then I'm going to t tear it diagonally like so so that I have a piece that's going to cover just the right side of oh cool like that it's gonna be a neat effect awesome background I like this layered look and it, although it might not seem like it right now, um, it's going to give this a nice light feeling. So even though we're putting a ton of stuff over top of this, um, it is going to have a nice light and airy look when we're finished. So your next step, of course, is to get this paper stuck in place. And I need two things to do that with. And I need my matte medium. You can use a decoupage medium if you like. I'm just like my matte medium. And uh, you need a brayer. I like this little mini brayer. Apparently it's still winter in Indiana. Well, spring didn't arrive until today, so. It's a gorgeous day out there. Yeah, finally. Dot rolled around in the grass, chewed on a stick. She was a happy puppers today. She got the, she got to be a dog. 
Yesterday, on the other hand, she no. did not want to leave her bed. Nope. She was a lump. She was a lump all day yesterday. Today, can't keep her out of the grass. Yep. <laughs> That's all right. Which is great. We, It confirmed my theory that she is affected by the weather. Oh, yeah. Every time it gets damp and cold here, um, Dot's Humid. like, yeah, nope. Yeah, she and shuts down. She shuts down, and it's just a lazy puppy day. Yeah. Which is unusual because she's not a lazy dog. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. No, she wants to go everywhere, see everything, smell all the things. Yep. Get pets from everybody. Yep. Say hi to everybody. Yeah. All right. Um... So, I've got a coat of matte medium on there. And I want a little bit of that cicada on there. Now I'm just going to line up that outside edge with the outside edge of my panel. Like so. Now, the fun part about this is that if you get wrinkles in this, it's okay. So if it's not nice and smooth and perfect, that's okay. And then you're going to use that brayer to make sure that paper is firmly seated onto your surface. Nice and tight. Love this little brayer. Great for inking, but it's fabulous for a whole bunch of other things too. So once you have that on, you're immediately going to take that matte medium and you're going to brush a generous coat over top of that paper because I want all of those edges nicely sealed nice and tight just like that now that little brayer takes all those bubbles out so that you don't get um, loose paper peeling off it makes sure that that paper is firmly seated in there so now we're going to dry this the nice thing about this matte medium is it dries very quickly. <laughs> I'm just having a quick look at the chat. I, I gotta agree with you, Brenda Ellis. This is I love this entomology paper. One super lightweight, and it's nice. The print work is nice and clear, and so it's really easy to work with. And here is the reason that I wanted to use this type of paper. Look at the stenciling showing through. It almost looks like old ink on there. I just love how that looks. So it won't take long. That's the other benefit to this type of paper is it does not take long to dry. And it's just such a great quality and it looks so good. <laughs> Like this one with the insects, the butterflies, the cicada, the beetles. And then all of this old um, script work and typing and old ads. And I just love that. I love the look of it. I do. I haven't seen a Tim Holtz paper that I don't like. And I've been really ridiculously obsessed with the Tim Holtz stamps of late, too. So I am a weak, weak woman. So there. Dried up nice and quick. Now, how do you get rid of these extra bits without damaging everything you've already done? Like this. If you have a nail file, an emery board, or something handy, you can do it that way. Just set sand down and away. Gives you a nice clean edge. So one the other benefit to these Tim Holtz papers is they're nice and thin. But they're not a cheap paper. Um, they're nice and thin, but they're not flimsy, if that makes any sense. The quality of these papers is really, really nice. Don't throw out these bigger bits because um, you can use these for other projects. I like keeping all my little bits, which is essentially how I did these. If I had torn it, 
and I had leftover paper, then I kept my, uh, my scrap and I used it on another piece. So I would use this piece to do, I don't know, maybe a piece going the other way. So I really like this. Look, <laughs> it's got one of those postage cancellation things. Love it. So my paper is nice and dry. The matte medium is nice and dry. So next we're going to subdue this a little bit. And the way I'm going to do that, let me put my paper away here. The way I'm going to do that is I have a little bit of um, light buttermilk is the color that I've chosen to work with. I went with a light buttermilk for two reasons. Um, a warm white, although we'll do the same thing, still wasn't, we have a visitor. Really? <laughs> Um, it still wasn't uh, warm enough. It, it got a little too cool. So I wanted something with a little touch of yellow in it so that it gave us a nice warm look. And I'm working with light buttermilk. So I'm going to put some white light buttermilk on my palette. I went through an entire eight ounce bottle of light buttermilk this week. It's a lot of paint. <laughs> There's a cat purring. Yeah, if you're wondering what that noise is, <laughs> it's soot. <laughs> Listen to her. She's loud. And uh, you can use water for this, or you can use a little bit of um, the Joe Sonia's Fast Dry Glaze. So you're going to thin this out. I want it really milky. Look at that. Really, really milky. And then you're going to brush that over top of your paper. And then you're going to take that right over top of all of that stenciling that we just did too. So nice and thin, like I said, it's gotta be milky. There we go. Brush it out. So we've got one coat on and I'm going to <laughs> dry this real fast. And again, because I'm using a fast dry glaze or water, it doesn't take very long. so you can see that as that dried it got a little bright a little darker so it's not nearly as subdued as i would like it just yet but we're getting there so i'm going to give it one more coat there we go and go right over top of it don't panic if it looks really light remember it's going to change a little bit as it dries and i really like how this looks no asphaltum over it no nope, no <laughs> asphaltum i did it in reverse this time yeah put the asphaltum in the stenciling and i'm Ooh. using that light buttermilk over top and we're going to dry that and i think i'm almost there We'll know in a minute <laughs> once it's completely dry. I have two no, I'm not peeing in the snow Yorkies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, there's Deb. Speaking <clears throat> of Yorkies. Oh, my God. Deb's Daisy yeah. got her first haircut yesterday. Oh, my God. She is cute. Cute as a bug. Soot has an amazing purr. I think Soot needs to teach my cat how to meow properly. Oh. No. Be careful what you wish for. No. <laughs> that cat is deaf, so it doesn't know how loud she, she is, is meowing. Yeah. Hmm. 
I'm liking this. I think I'm there. I don't think I want to make it much lighter. So I'm going to stop because I like it. And Miss Daisy's got big brown eyes. Oh, Miss Daisy's huge. adorable. You got huge eyes. She's sweet. So there is our background. So essentially all you're doing is building up and then pushing it back. So I've subdued this with that bit of light buttermilk right over top of everything. And so we get this really great look. Now watch this. We're going to take a stamp. I, my Grinch set. I think I saw something about a Varmariner puppy. <laughs> Who got a Varmariner puppy? So I'm going to use my stamp and my stamp pad. I'm using the Vintage Note stamp. This is one of my favorites. Oh, okay. Never mind. She picked up a Varmariner puppy about 16 years ago. Oh, my. She's gone now, but she was a very special dog. I have no doubt all dogs are special. <laughs> Especially Varmariners. Varmariners are beautiful dogs. Beautiful dogs. So I'm using my grunge set just to add a few little what's it's and who's it's in here. And of course, I got to use my. I need another stamp with like cancellation stamps. <laughs> I just do. Deb, you got to learn to say no to Miss Daisy. I know you can't say no to a cute face, <laughs> but you, you, you got to. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to end up in trouble. So I've got a little bit of stamping. I didn't do a whole lot. I just wanted another layer in there. And then you're going to take your brush with just a little bit of that heavily thinned warm uh warm white not warm white light buttermilk and you're going to just lightly brush a coat of that over top all it does is subdue those stamps a little bit you can do this at any time you can do it after you do the stenciling you can do it it depends do you want it over top of the paper or underneath that's entirely up to you so there we go silver and fawn varmariner wow pretty very pretty you don't see two to two tones very often. They're the ones that look like they're made out of some kind of a metallic. They're just yeah, <laughs> like uh, they're, silver. Yeah, they've got a beautiful sheen to their coat. Yeah, mm. almost the same color as uh, blue nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That silvery gray. It's just beautiful. So there we go. So that is how you develop that background. I already have mine prepped. Oh, Deb says those stamp sets will be back in stock next week. Excellent. In a week or so. In a week or so. Excellent. So I have, I've done my uh, prep piece is on a, uh, uh, one of those tombstone panels. And I've positioned my line drawing and I'm going to transfer that. The reason... <laughs> Where did my red gel pen go? Um, it's way over there in my little thingy. Oh, I got it. I got it. You know, hold the phone. Little fat white jar. Yep. That's the one. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm using my red gel to trace this out. Now, Cut yourself some slack when you're doing this. <laughs> uh, my Corso puppy just weighed in last week. Oh, no. 110 pounds. Uh, puppy. Puppy. <laughs> <laughs> it's using the term loosely. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Corso. It's a cane Corso. <laughs> But be sweet. Oh, corsos are awesome. They're scary when they growl. Everything's scary when they growl. Well, <laughs> except <not>. Yorkies. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> that doesn't scare me. No, it doesn't scare 
me either, but <laughs> I was having one of my sleepless nights last week. <laughs> she growls at Gizmo. Gizmo is, he's an ass. <laughs> He's an ass. I'm sorry. Gizmo is our 22, 23 pound silver point tabby. Great big lumbering goofball that he is. I call him Stumpy. We call him Stumpy because of the markings <laughs> on his front legs. Make, make him, him look, look like he's his front legs are bow-legged. He's just... <laughs> and he walks around with this permanent expression of you know, confusion. Nope. He's just so sweet, but he's as thick as a brick. But he likes to bug Dot. Never mind the fact that she outweighs him by 70 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he could care less. But he likes to bug her. So at three o'clock in the morning, while I'm trying not to wake anybody while I'm wandering around the house, I did not see Gizmo, but at first until i heard this deep low <laughs> growl at 3 a.m and i'm like oh my god if that doesn't put your heart in your throat gulp and it was dot gizmo was laying on his side with his front paw through the door and batting at her mm -hmm. at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> <laughs> See if I can piss her off enough to bark. <laughs> Wake up. I want to play. Yeah. He's just an ass. Why a red gel pen? Um, So that I can see where I've been. <laughs> I like the red gel pen. There's nothing worse than taking your line drawing off your surface and realizing that you missed a few spots <laughs> with the red gel pen. I can see where I've been. So if I've missed anything, I'll know. <laughs> I have a black shepherd who gets a ton of compliments on how beautiful he is, but everyone is scared of him. Uh, black shepherd, probably Alsatian, probably about 100 pounds. Yeah. Very slim, long hair. Scary. Yeah, it can be a scary dog. Yeah. Or but I be bet a he's a goofball. Yeah, probably he's a shepherd. <laughs> he's a shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I'd shepherds are goofballs yeah they can be i know ours is <laughs> <laughs> she's a dutchie she's a dutch shepherd she's a goofball she is a goofball she's got a great big smile she has a very expressive face almost pitbull like she's funny almost like that breed has got pitbull in it what I get a kick out of is Dot talking. <laughs> <laughs> Dot likes to talk every once in a while. But she usually does it in her sleep, which is even funnier. Two breeds you've never heard of. Varmariners and Corsos? You've probably seen them movies and whatnot. They're absolutely breathtaking dogs. Mm. Uh, the Varmariners. Yeah. They're silvery gray in color or silvery, like a taupey gray. Beautiful dog. Almost like a Vishla. Yeah. There's there's, there's another one you probably, probably never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> They're a hunting dog. Yeah. Beautiful animal. Yeah. Um, aesthetically, just a beautiful animal, but they're, it's their demeanor. Oh, they, they're very relaxed. Oh, chill. they're so mellow. They're very lazy when they're not working. Yeah. But they're smart. Yeah. Stupid smart. <laughs> smart enough to get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like Gizmo. <laughs> Have you ever seen Benji? The movie Benji. 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 A Benji dog. Is Benji a rumor in No. Oh, Benji's a like a wire hair terrier, isn't he? Yeah. Or is it B E N? B E N J I, Benji. Now the thing about tracing out this lettering is that it's it's a little forgiving. This one is pretty straightforward. It's a nice curvy. Um, it flows really nicely. Kind of has a European flavor to it. I like this font. 
and it's an easy one to work with. And for this type of thing, it's really forgiving. So you can make it super crisp and super clean, or it can have little wobbles and bobbles in it and it still works. So I like this particular one. And tracing this on, um, I'm more concerned about the accuracy, making sure that the everything is straight and level than I am with the lettering being absolutely perfect. The font style by itself is a little rustic looking, so it's not um, it's not full of crisp, solid, sharp edges. The edges are a little imperfect and a little rustic looking. So it's a very forgiving font. And so you can be kind to yourself a little bit while you're doing this. So there I have my line drawing traced on, except I missed one. <laughs> See, talking, not doing. I forgot the R, which is why I taped my lettering in place. So that when I do stuff like that, there we go. Have you ever seen a bien? Oh, wait. Benji is a dog that rarely backs and there rarely barks, and their bark is more of a. Oh, um, uh, it's a behani. Behani. I don't know. So I have a pretty straightforward uh, color palette for this one. Uh, again, I used, I'm using the fluid acrylics, but you can use the Americana. When you look at the pattern, it's going to have uh, some replacement colors in the supply list. So that if you're, um, if you don't have the media colors, these are the ones that you can use as far as the Americanas are concerned. So um, your Americana colors for this piece are pretty simple. We have Diox. We have Margarita Green. And now i got to find my Sap Green. Or not my Sap Green, my Plantation Pine. Hello, there it is. Okay. So the colors that I'm using in the Fluid Acrylic are the Green Gold, the Sap Green, and Diox Purple. In the Americanas, they're going to be dioxazine purple, plantation pine, and margarita. So there's your three colors in the Americana if you want to paint it using the, the regular Americana colors. And um, But the ones I'm going to work with here are the fluid acrylics. And this is the diox, the green gold, and the sap green. And... Again, I've tried to keep this palette as simple as possible. So I'm going to break out. Um, I've got a nice round here. I'm going to use a round brush and some green gold. And we're going to start with those leaves and the stem. And you're going to thin these colors out. We don't want these full strength. You want them about milk-like consistency. I want to keep these colors as transparent as I can. Now I'm applying color up to the lines. And I say up to the lines so that I can take off those graphite lines at, at another point. So I'm just painting up to the line. I'm trying not to go over them. If you do, it's not a big deal, but it is a mixed media piece, so we there's a hundred things we can do to make it work if we cannot get the graphite lines off. So I've got the stem in. I'm going to do the leaf as well. And again, you can just paint it in. It's mm. not... Uh, yes, the fluid paints are more transparent than the Americanas. Yes, very. They also have a much higher pigment load. Uh, so a little bit goes a very long way, which is one of the reasons I love them. I love the transparency. 
if I need them to be more opaque, I just simply put down a coat of um, white gesso or black gesso, depending on the color I'm using or the look that I'm trying to get. <laughs> but generally white gesso and any brand will do. It doesn't have to be the media line. It can be whatever white gesso you have on hand. In this case, I wanted these elements to be transparent. I want that paper and all of that stamping and stenciling that we've done to come through. So it's a super forgiving piece. So stem leaves done. We've got that base coated. So next we're going to go into that flower. And again, we're going to use these colors heavily thinned. So this Diox, super dark, super rich. I want this color very watery. So lots and lots of water, lots and lots of glaze. We want this really thin. Whew. I just saw pictures of a, uh, a Japanese Akita Inu. Oh. Yeah. That, that is a dog you don't want to mess with. <laughs> I think not. Yeah. It, well, a Japanese Akita is smaller than American Akita. Yeah. But you mix that with an Inu, like a Shiba Inu, mm -hmm. you get a cute looking dog. Yeah, with teeth. With aggressive okay. tendencies. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. beautiful dog, though. So, I'm putting a coat of that Diox Purple. And again, I'm just painting up to the line. This is very, very thin. Hi. There you go. So look at that, that color. Oh my God. So the cute. one ear? The one ear drooping <laughs> down. <laughs> Adorable. Uh, what brush are you using? This one, I'm. this one is a great big old number one. I've never been one to use big brushes for base coating. And so I tend to gravitate to smaller rounds that's what this one is does white chalk paint work the same as white gesso uh yes actually it will it's just when you're painting over top of it you have to remember that it is uh open it has uh it's porous i do love how the finish though because the gesso that chalk gesso is just gorgeous you just have to keep in mind that it it will drink up color Oh, uh, because gesso is more porous? Some are. Some are less so. It depends on the brand. Just You'll notice that I usually test an area if, I'm, if it's a gesso I'm not familiar with, just to see how much of the color it grabs. Because sometimes they'll <laughs> grab it right up and you can't move it. <laughs> and other times it just sits on top, does nothing until it dries. So th as I said, this is a soup forgiving technique for this <laughs> this is just loose watery washes of color don't worry about getting it consistent either it doesn't matter we just want to get that first layer of color in whoa what i think i just got everything from facebook all oh. in one shot <laughs> okay because it just went the chat yeah yeah i doubt uh... Or it just repeated everything for some weird reason. So I love that I can just fill in all of these spaces. I like leaving a little gap between whenever possible. You can see. It's a very forgiving. Yeah, this is also fun is that it still, you can still see all of the stamping and stenciling through it. But we're going to have a nicely defined flower so again just painting up to the line i think i saw janet roach we have a package for you miss janet we need your address i have hers is gone yeah it's sitting up there there's no address on it that's not janet is it not no oh no never mind <laughs> Never mind. It's for uh, a Janet, uh, Jeanette 
Brewer with a U. Because I know JL is in here. Yeah. And if she isn't, where are you? You're always so, in Yeah, here. we have a, a door prize for Jeanette Brewer. And, but we have not been able to find your address. And so we need you to uh, message us so that we can send you your prize from last week, wasn't it? Yay. What do we got here? So this is, look how super simple this is. It's just filling in these bits. I think Janet Roche is flying back home today. She is. Yeah, she was on holiday. <laughs> Thanks for getting me all excited, Renee. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I saw I saw your name and for some reason, no, I shipped something for you already. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I shipped it yesterday. So it's on its way. Mm -hmm. Just ordered the media acrylics from Sandy McTeer. Good job. Sandy's, if you're looking for them, she's got a great selection right now. Oh, she's not going to be disappointed. I sent her her goodies. Mm -hmm. She's getting them. Oh, there's JL. JL Brewer. I love Happy Mail. <laughs> Who doesn't love Happy Mail? Who doesn't? Uh, I spent a lot of time on Amazon this week tracking down different products. What is this? I love how the first coat has such vibrant value or variant it, variations in value. Exactly. And that's part of what makes this work. So. And I love how this looks. I just think it's so pretty. Now, because we are working with very thin, transparent layers of color, we can use our base color to paint in those flip overs. So all of those little folds, we're just going to use that straight diox in those little folds. Just have a look at your line drawing. You'll be able to see where they are. And this also helps you create that look of dimension. And I just happen to think it looks really pretty. Oh, Sandy's in Florida? Sandy's at NAMTA. Creativation's NAMTA. Oh, uh, you would have been there. I would have. Would have loved to have gone this year, but wasn't in the books. That's okay. You I'm might just... have to renew your passport. Or are you still good? I've got a 10-year passport. Oh, you got a 10-year. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> so I like that little little shadow in is those that, places. Is that a no-float flower? Kind of. Kind of? Yeah. We're not technically floating. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so right away you start to see all of that um dimension showing up those curves and those ripples are starting to show up in our flower now i'm going to switch to a five eighths angled shader i'm using a faux squirrel just because it holds a lot and remember, from this point on, we're going to be using heavily thinned color. So I'm going to start with the folds on this forward petal here. And I'm going to go into my mixture of my heavily thinned diox. And yeah, it's kind of a float, but it's kind of not. I'm just sort of patting that color in. Somebody would like to see the paint bottles. For the, the paint, paint you're using. The Diox, this is the Media Fluid Acrylic. comes in a one ounce bottle. There you go. The first thing you're going to notice is how much pigment there is in it. As soon as you put it out on the palette. So you do not need a lot of paint on your palette when you're working with these. The pigmentation is very, very high. Mm -hmm. Where can you get these in Canada? Country Bear. Yep, Country Bear. Country Bear carries them. Oh, darn, no floating said no one ever. <laughs> so <laughs> essentially, I just pity, pity patted that in. And I'm doing the same 
in these little folds, just like that. I am not worried about whether or not they're perfect. I'm just laying some color in. So we like our little floats. Remember the low part on these? It's just a little bit. And again, I just pity pat it in because I don't, I'm a lazy painter. And it really doesn't matter in this piece. We're not worried about perfect little floats. Because, and why would we? Because we've got all of these things showing through it that affect how it looks in the end. So I've got my little shadows in. Again, I didn't worry too much about getting them perfect. COVID restrictions vary from province to province right now. Oops, I forgot one. Right here. But at a national level, I don't think there are any. Nope. Borders are open. Except if you're unvaccinated, you can't fly or take a train or a bus. Yeah, I think that's going to change too. Yeah. Shortly. So again, I'm just taking a little bit of that color. You can do this with a round brush and just stroke it in. <gasps> Same with underneath that petal, that little flip. Remember the little flip? Can you dry brush with media acrylics? Yes, you can. Yeah. Anything you can do with a standard acrylic, you can do with the media acrylic. Cat McDonald, I'm still waiting for on a stencil I ordered in March. Would you know if they are on the way? Everything that was ordered in March is long gone. Yep, it's already been shipped. So I, if you're in the United States, it's probably still either processing or on its way. Yep. But uh, it has left here because we ship out on a regular basis. Uh, twice a week. Twice a week we ship, so. Yeah. Nothing sits here very long. No. If it doesn't ship within a day or two, it's usually because we're waiting for something. Yeah. <laughs> and if it's been sitting for a week, it's because we're waiting on multiple things. Yeah. <laughs> But we don't usually let them sit that long. No. We'll usually refund or... Um, and we... I... Yeah. Try to... My best to let you know that you've been refunded. Why it's been refunded. Yeah. And very seldomly do we have inventory issues. But yeah. they do happen. They do happen. And it's usually delays in shipping that cause the issue. So I've put... Just And this is just the um, Diox Purple, same color that we've been using all the way along, base color. Just putting thin layers of it over top, it gets a little darker each time you put a layer of color on. So I just pity pat a little in there. This has a very watercolor <laughs> type effect to it. It's an easy one to do. It's very forgiving. Don't worry about getting them perfect. A lot of this is just going to happen. One way or the other. And I like how that looks. So I think I'm happy with where I am right now. I want to deepen a couple of shadows here. So I'm going to put a little bit more. Notice that this is not... A super smooth or super accurate float. It doesn't need to be. I'm not even really floating it. Where is JL from? She's New Brunswick one, isn't she? No, she's in Alberta. She's in Alberta. Uh... There's not too many craft stores that I could think of that carry the uh... the media acrylics. Uh, not offhand. No, Michaels doesn't carry yeah. them. Oh. I wish they did. You might have to find like a little mom and pop shop. Um, one place you can check um, if you're in Edmonton or if you get to Edmonton um, is Delta Arts. They also have a website. You can check with them. Um, I have gotten quite a few supplies through them in the last year and a bit because um, it's been difficult to find things. And so I've, just by luck, 
um, located them. They're based in Edmonton, and they've been fantastic. Um, no live video signal? What? From where? Uh, somebody said that in Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah, it keeps getting interrupted. That's what I'm seeing. So I'm using just, as I said, really weak little floats. Well, you could do this with a, a round as well. I just, I like these little shadows. I'm looking at the wrong monitor. <laughs> there we go. So it's just little bits of color to help give it that ruffle. And this one works up very quickly. Very, very quickly. So I'm going to leave the flower for a minute and I'm going to come down here to these leaves. And the color I'm using is the sap green. If you're painting with the Americana, you're going to be using plantation pine. <laughs> Now, these leaves are super easy. We're going to use a little of that plantation pine or the sap green, and we're going to shade underneath the flower. And again, I'm using a really weak sort of pity pat type thing. And I'm shading underneath and then in behind that lettering. And I want to get some nice dark shadow down here. The base of this leaf. Not my traditional float. Not that I float traditionally, but. <laughs> Down that center vein. Get that whole chisel edge of that brush on your surface. It'll give you a, a smoother float. Oh, there you go, JL. Deb Antonick with the, the with local the no. Uh, Kensington Art Supply in Calgary carries fluid acrylics. Nice. So there you go, JL. Something a little closer to home. Yep. Deb knows that because she's got grandbabies in, in Calgary. In Calgary. And she used to live in Calgary, correct? Yep. Yeah. For a so long time. Yeah, there you go. She knows. So there is the shading on my leaf. Again, you don't have to be too um, too perfect with that float and getting that color on there because it doesn't matter. We just want to get a little shadow and some shape in there. And then we're going to go down the left side of that stem. You know what? I'm going to do this with that with a little round because uh, just more control i think valerie clemens hey valerie says hi from oklahoma o oklahoma such a pretty state is it i you know i've been to oklahoma like four times every time i go i find something new to go see it's just such a pretty state reminds me a great deal of manitoba oh yeah yeah when you're you know when you're up in the lake areas it's wooded, but okay, still yep. plain. Yeah, Oklahoma is beautiful. Lots of open spaces, big skies. Do they get the bay flies? Uh, no, I don't think so. I hope not. But, uh, yeah. And I found the people in Oklahoma were, were very much like Flatlanders. Well, Oklahoma is in the prairies, is it not? Yeah. But, yeah. They're right, just... They are Flatlanders. <laughs> <laughs> they're not Manitoba Flatlanders or prairies. Oh, okay, gotcha. That's you. what I mean. Yeah, My ears popped cool. when I first went up Regent Hill there. <laughs> <laughs> it's only 800 feet above I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the worst part. Yeah. <laughs> I went up 800 feet. My ears popped. You usually get that when you're at 30,000 feet. <laughs> well, you grew up in Flatland, so. <laughs> I didn't mind the prairies. Oh, no. I thought it, I loved it out there. It was great. So I'm going to come back to our original base color, which is that light buttermilk. You can do this with warm white too. We're just going to make a lighter value of that <laughs> green. 
So any white, light buttermilk, warm white, whatever you're working with will do the trick. And I've just mixed it with a little of my base color. And I'm just going to put a weak float. You'll notice something. I am not going for a fully opaque highlight. I just want to change the value slightly. <laughs> my son didn't like Oklahoma. He was there for boot camp. I loved Oklahoma. Every time I've been, it's just, it's been a... An yeah. education, I think, is the word I'm looking for. Um, There's only two places I hate because of the military. Dundurin and Shiloh. <laughs> <laughs> Prairie places. No, I actually enjoyed Petawawa. Petawawa is a nice base. Gagetown's a great base. Yeah, Gagetown's a great base. <laughs> but I... <laughs> <laughs> I also was never a student engaged. <laughs> yeah, thankfully. Nope. That would change your opinion, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I was a student in Gagetown, but I still enjoyed it. Yeah. But it was more of a... because mom's cooking was handy. It was more of a, uh, what do you call it? It was more of a mentorship course rather than it being... Yeah, a course in the strictest sense. Yeah. So I just used a little of that thinned uh, green mixed with a little of either warm white or light buttermilk. All it does is just make that green just a touch more opaque so that the color kind of matches what we've done in that background. So it's a very soft transition. It doesn't bury it completely. Um, and it's not a super bright highlight, but it's enough that it changes it and it keeps it in the same ballpark as the rest of this very watery looking finish you want to take a little little break to is it time to spread? draw for one of these prizes yeah Yay. let me I do i gotta open up this one there we go yeah uh, make it smaller yeah there we go what's new on google chrome <laughs> don't care <laughs> uh wheel Wildwood Crafts? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, if you're in Australia. Yep. There we go. Whoa. How many names we got today? Today we got 148. Nice. That's not right. Oh, that's the wrong wheel. That's your membership wheel. Uh, I gotta open this one. <laughs> That's the membership wheel. 176. That's nice. the one. That's a little better. Boop. So, All right. I gotta switch cameras. I'm going to. You can't look. see it. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just putzing. <laughs> There's the wheel. We got the wheel. Do, 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 do. 178 names. Look at this. Nice. So the giveaway for today is a set of um, Tombow pencils. I really like their graphite pencils. They are very, very nice to work with um, for sketching, for drawing, for a variety of things. Anyway, there's a set of those. Um, for three of you. There I'm rather go. excited about them. Make sure you guys get to play with some really great products. All right. I, I need my Sharpie. And I think there's uh, there's also a Dynasty brush in there. Plus there is a... Um, Goodies. Craftgasm <laughs> pencil case in there. Oh, it's got a new sticker on it. Yay. All <laughs> right. Shall I click? Mm -hmm. Let's click. Let's spin. <laughs> oh. Who do we got? Who do we got? Who do we get? Who do we got? Robin Wilson. Oh, Robin Wilson. Robin, I think we already have your shipping information. <laughs> we will uh, get that all packaged up and sent out to you this week. Boom. Robin Wilson. That's one. Let's do one more. One more? One more. Okay. While the paint's drying. While the paint's drying. <laughs> go okay i'm not gonna remove your name don't worry let's see close 
and spin again. <laughs> Who do we get? Who do we get? Who do we get? Charlotte Downey. Nice. Charlotte's in London, Ontario. Is she? She is. So I'm guessing you have her information? We have. Actually, I, yeah. Yeah, you packed an order for her this week, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I only packed orders on Monday and Friday. So anything in the middle of the week, I, I'm sorry. I usually end up packing them. <laughs> yeah. In the middle of the week, I'm, a, I'm actually at the art gallery. Uh, yeah. Ernie's working security for the art gallery. Yeah. Mainly the Dolly exhibit. The Dolly exhibit. Yes. Very cool. All right. I got to close that. that. <laughs> and close that. And make that bigger. And back to the paper. So we've got the highlights done on our leaf down here, but we're going to do some highlights up here to make all of those folds and ripples in those petals really stand out. So we're going to do that with a little bit of that diox. And then I'm just going to pick up a touch. I just want to make a, a very faint purple. Very, very light purple. And I can't see the chat. There we go. Now I got the chat. And then opposite that sh shadow. So if I've got a float, dark float, on the left side, then I want my highlight on the right, right against it. So that contrast creates a nice little fold. So wherever we have one of those little folds, we want to put that light highlight in. <laughs> Can I change my name? No. <laughs> there we go. Now, again, these floats don't have to be perfect. Those little highlights don't have to be perfect. Look at that. So we got a nice little... <laughs> Yay, someone in Ontario won. Happens more often than you think. Yeah. We are... Always sending out prizes uh, every week, so. Uh, on my screen, the background seems to have a bluish tinge. Is that what it's like in real life? Uh, no, it tends to be more gray. Yeah. It could just simply be the lighting. Actually, no, it does have a blue tinge to it. I think it's pulling from the, the purples. It could be. I can even see it from it, here. To me, it just looks gray. It does have a blue tinge to it. So I'm going to take a little bit of that buttermilk, light buttermilk, warm white, whatever we have with a little. And I'm just putting a little highlight on the tops of those curves. I love these lighter colors. They just give you lots of trend of contrast when you're doing this stuff so that you're not you don't have to have them absolutely perfect <laughs> this is a very loose look so i think i'm happy with those oh and if the prizes aren't claimed within two weeks they go right back into our stash our stash <laughs> Put it this way, our 12 days of Christmas last year? It was more like 36. It was. It would have been like 36 days of Christmas, but we had we had to dumb it down. Yeah, we had to reduce that a little bit because it was just a little much. <laughs> well, the, the sponsors were really nice. They were. They were extremely generous. So we are you trying to use it all up. We might actually have an event coming up. Yes. Wink. Wink, nudge, nudge, nudge. nudge. <laughs> well, we're thinking, we're because we have an anniversary of sorts coming up too. Um, we have 
been making videos coming up on two years. Yeah, making videos and... Yeah, the channel has been since the beginning of the pandemic, so it'll be two years well, in June. Your YouTube channel's been around a lot mm. longer than that. No, but doing the lives. <laughs> but since we started doing the lives, has it been two years? Almost. Wow. And then the membership group is going to be a year coming up soon, too. So yeah, near the end of this month. Yeah. So uh, we're planning a few things for that, too. So. Yeah. so I just took a little float. Again, nothing too neat and tidy. Uh, into the deeper sections of this flower. <laughs> More towards the center. I just wanted to make them a little darker. It gives this flower a little bit more dimension because it's a little bit darker. Uh, Pat High is asking, what did you use to thin the paint? I'm using Joe Sonia's Fast Dry Glaze, but you can use water. It will work just fine. That's a great thing about those acrylics. That's a wonderful thing about these, especially the fluid acrylics. I just love the fluid acrylics. So, I'm just a couple of little things I gotta fix because <laughs> I, I goofed here. Uh, JL says I would be happy to claim anything not already claimed. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, um, we get more than you would think. People that just, you know, don't those one-time visitors that like, yeah, and comment, and then they never come back. Yeah, or they, you know. For whatever reason, they just don't join us again, or or they do and just you know had to leave before their name was called, etc. But it happens. It happens. Okay, so I've got I deepened my shading in a few places. Now I'm want, I'm going to bring this up a little closer so you can see it. It is not. We are not talking perfect floats. We are not talking <laughs> um, really heavily accurate and detailed painting. We're just implying that there's turnovers, that there's dimension, that there's texture. That's it. So um, the neatness thing in the big <laughs> deal for this one. What's your saying? Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. There you go. So this one is intended to have a very loose, um, unstructured feel to it. Lots of transparent color. I love that I can still see the stamps right through this image that I can see the stenciling right through that image. I love that. I think it has a nice watercolory effect and it, it is very effective. Mm. So just to tone this, to make it look a little softer, I'm going to take, and because it would kind of throw people off if I didn't use some, I'm going to use a tiny bit of a schwalten. and it's heavily thinned. And I'm just going to put it in these little flip overs here. Deepen some of these little shadows with it. And it does warm up this color considerably. So that it doesn't look quite so... I think the word I'm looking for is um, unnatural. <laughs> I like having that little bit of a schwaltum in there. It keeps things warm, keeps them a little grounded. And it deepens some of these shadows quite nicely without making them super dark. <laughs> there. A little bit of a schwaltum. Uh, did you... Mm. Love your Saturday morning lessons. Thank you from Wisconsin. You're welcome from Wisconsin. <laughs> that was Mary Ann Vury Hughes. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> if not, correct me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so our next step, we're going to add a little more dimension to this. And we're going to use that postal stamp stencil. I know it's a cancellation stamp. Big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows I'm something be, about the postal service. There's, I don't know what it is about these, but I have a weak because they're not used anymore. 
It could be. I, I just love the vintage feel of it, I guess. But cancellation stamps aren't used anymore. I know. That's... That... Remember that? They used to squiggles on them and whatnot. I just love no. how this looks. So I'm using a little bit of 24 karat gold. Now you can do this two ways. You can overlap the image and the lettering. Or you can do it first and then overlap the image and then have the lettering over top of the stencil. It works. It works too. It doesn't need to be perfect. It can be wherever you want it to be. You can put it up here. You can put it up there. Whatever you want to do with it is fine. I just like it. Um, sort of break up this corner a little bit. Apparently I pronounced it perfectly. Oh, good for you. Look at me. <laughs> I'm one of them educated folk. <laughs> Educated. I went to university, ish. Yeah. When university I was thirty. Of Toronto. <laughs> ish. When I was thirty. <laughs> yeah. ah, twenty nine. Sorry. Twenty nine. Yep. I was twenty nine when I went to university. That's okay. I got a little certificate that says I went and finished high school. Yeah. Ish. Ish. <laughs> So this is where I take my other, that other postage stencil, and I'm going to put it up towards the top. I just like this one. It just carries the theme, and then I remove it. Ooh, love it. Love it. So I'm going to dry this real quick. I just like the dimension that this gives. You could put it on at any time. I just prefer to do it after I have the flower in because then I can decide where I want to place it in relation to that flower. So I'm just going to draw this real quick. Now we're going to focus on our lettering for this. Apparently Sue Braun waited until she was 40 before she went to college. There's no time limit on learning. No. You can always learn. Actually, my I my something. best friend is in uh, the Red River College for welding. He's the same age as me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the average person changes their occupation nine times in their lifetime. The average person. I got four more to go. <laughs> well you can add cameramen and video producers <laughs> three more to go <laughs> lamp black I was looking for my black paint two more to go I just realized I'm currently in security there you go oh mind you I was doing security before yeah but different <laughs> you work for an art gallery yeah it's still security. It is, but that's only the subject. That's not the job. The job changes. But uh, occupation. It's still... When you stop and think about it, some people will change their job nine times. Comedian? Yes. There you go. Okay, so I got one left. <laughs> uh, I've never been paid for comedy, so... Though sometimes I think I should have been. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to use a number two rigger. A zero or a two is ideal. You're going to need something smaller, uh, like a 10 aught or even a liner to do this little lettering below. But I'm going to use my number two. Sorry, I've got a zero here. You learn something new every day? Oh, yes. Oh, you should. If you're not learning. So I'm using a little bit of lamp black. I'm going to just stroke this in. This would look great in my sunroom. Well, <laughs> oddly enough, when I was painting this, this first one, I kept thinking, ooh, this would be so pretty on the main floor bath. I've got a kind of a floral thing going in there anyway. <laughs> so I thought it'd be really pretty in there. And then when I get all three of them done, I changed my mind because now I think they'd look really pretty in the entryway. So uh, apparently food critic. So that's my nine occupations. 
Um, however, comedian and food critic, I have yet to be paid for. So I can't really <laughs> count them as professions. I didn't say profession. I said occupation. Yeah. Okay. Occupation. <laughs> Does that also entail payment? Not necessarily. I'm looking up the definition of occupation. I'm probably going to get something like Russia's occupation. <laughs> well, there's that. It's used in different ways, but yeah. occupation can also mean something that just uses up your time. Something that keeps you occupied. Do, do, do. Occupation, a job or profession. Okay. A job or profession Fair requires enough. payment. <laughs> an action state or period of occupying or being occupied by military force that's the secondary gotcha then i stand corrected those are the only two definitions for occupation really yeah <laughs> a job or profession I've heard it used as something simply as something that uses your time. There we go. Now, as I said when I was tracing this on, I chose this font because it is not an absolutely perfect font. There is a roughness to it. It's not crisp and sharp there is something about it that is a little rustic and even though it is a fairly clean font and easy to read it is uh, you know it has a few little wobbles and bobbles in the edges and in the outline and that appealed to me for this because I kind of wanted this to have an aged appearance but I didn't want it to look too rustic I wanted it to have a little bit of elegance oh Here's something from JL. What's that? Uh, not that I could ever afford to travel, but I would like to think one day we could all meet up and paint a, at a paint retreat with Tracy. <laughs> I'd like to dream big. <laughs> well, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not out of the realm of possibilities. Yep. And you're in Calgary. There are conventions in Calgary that she goes to. Yep. So... Yep. It's not outside the realm of possibility, Jail. It's just the last two years kind of put a hamper on things. Indeed. But that's going to change. So, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. There 2023 might... is booking up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Yep. 2023 is going to be fun and sounds like I may need to go get my passport. Yeah, you do. So... It's going to be now, fun. Um, I intentionally, because so many things were up in the air, I did not book anything. And I didn't submit to any conventions for 2022 either, simply because so much was up in the air um, in reference to travel, to a, a whole range of things. So I didn't want to commit to something just to have to turn around and cancel. So I intentionally did not... Um, submit for any conventions at all not even zoom conventions um even zoom classes i've been limiting what i've been doing so i think i've only got a couple this year oh and patrick pantafus says the same thing i hope one day i have enough money to cross the atlantic and attend some sort of convention with painters too oh there's so much fun <laughs> <laughs> you're missing out <laughs> there's so much fun uh, apparently, Deb says you need to create a weekend in Calgary retreat. Mm-hmm. I do. Oh, and I... With Deb. With Deb. With Deb. With Deb. And wouldn't it be fun if we could convince Sandy McTeer to come? Oh, I don't think you'd have to do much to convince her. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be a blast. It would be, hey, Sandy, got an idea. And she'd go, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> don't you want to hear my idea? <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Which 
which could be a good thing. It could or, be a dangerous thing. Oh, no, those three in the same room? Well, I, I, we've done it before. Um, in Oklahoma City, we shared a booth. Oh, yeah? Uh, called, All three of you? Yeah, and we called the booth. Well, actually, it was by accidental. Um, that's the WTF that's thing, the isn't WTF. it? That's the WTF. We three yes. friends. Yep. Yeah, that, that got misconstrued with something else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, well, we've had a lot of fun with that, but it was a blast. So I'm using, this is a 10 aught rigger. This is what I'm using to paint this smaller lettering underneath. And this is just thinned lamp black. Doesn't need to be any uh, fancy color, just lamp black. We could do it in Banff. <gasps> oh, Banff. Banff is gorgeous. Awesome yeah, choice. Wonderful. And that was Deb. Of course. Yeah. Because that's near to her. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Deb WTF? Yep. Deb and I need a road trip. Yeah. We haven't been on a road trip in almost three years. It'll be three years by the time. Uh... Tracy, I wish 60 plus years ago I was taught your motto. I think life would have been different. Try tried perfection which is usually not attainable which leads to just don't try yeah it leads to a lot of frustration and that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself don't be perfect honestly where's my sticker I mean, when you stop and think about it why put all that pressure on yourself to get something nailed the first time one of the biggest problems for students is this idea that they have to be able to do it exactly the way the teacher did. The teacher has had, you know, 20, 30, 40 years of experience developing her techniques. It took her that long to get there. What makes you think you're going to get it in an afternoon? Honestly. So why beat yourself up? Try it. See if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, then find what does work for you. That's what gives every artist's work that certain something that makes it their work. It's taken them years of, well, I don't like the way that works, so I'm going to try something a little bit different. And, ooh, I like the way that came out, or nope, that didn't work. It took years to develop techniques it took years to figure out how the paint does what it does when it does what it looks like over top of other things there's years of experimentation that goes into a lot of these things don't beat yourself up if you don't nail it exactly so right off the bat <laughs> you got to cut yourself some slack and allow yourself some creativity there. And allow yourself to mess up from time to time because God knows for every one of these, <laughs> there's probably one or two that saw the inside of the dustbin. So I had to dig through my envelope of stickers. You found your stickers. Yeah. Renee collects all the stickers that come with various orders and shipments and whatnot. Apparently one from leggings was be a nice human. Yes. From sweet legs. Oh, I love sweet, sweet legs. legs. And I I just like that statement. Be yeah, a nice human. Be a nice human. It's a great statement. And then I got some sticker mule stuff. Yep. Sticker mule. So. I like the, the I'm guessing coyote. Let's see. Uh, two coyotes on a skateboard doing graffiti. <laughs> I got nothing. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it, um, bandaged up teenager with a hat saying "Be true." Okay, it's I like, don't know what that is either. Um, so the next color I'm using is a little bit of a, a faltum, and we're going to thin this out, and we're going to put a drop shadow on this lettering. Oh, I got two of those. Okay. Oh, another sticker mule, mule. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of those. So I'm thinning out that asphalt in pretty much the same way I did for the flower. I want it really transparent. I don't want it fully opaque. 
So I'm using a lot of water or glaze to thin it out. And I'm using a, a liner. And I'm going to put a line on the right side of the letter, leaving a tiny little space. Just like that. Ooh, here's a good one from Facebook. What's that? Uh, have you ever done a piece with the subject, like, bubbles or balloons, showing the transparency and shine techniques? No, I have not, but that's great food for thought. Mm -hmm. Or a subject half covered in water that shows the difference in color, transparency, texture of the water. I'd love to learn those techniques. You know who's really great with water? It's Marco Aguilar. Ah, yes. Marco. Oh, yes. His, I've seen his stuff. When it comes to water transparency, the texture of water and how light reacts passing through it, I cannot tell you how much I would recommend you take a class with Marco. Marco is brilliant and water is his specialty. So if you get a chance, his name is Marco Aguilar. Go and check him out. He does the most incredible seascapes and anything to do with water. He's just remarkable. I'm not getting any YouTube chat. All I got is Facebook on this monitor right now. I have to look over here. <laughs> so I'm just putting that thin little line of thinned asphaltum and I'm leaving a little space between the letters. And that gives me that nice little drop shadow on my lettering. <laughs> I used to tell my students the magic trunk trick. The magic put, trunk trick. Yep, yeah, put their piece in the trunk of their car. By the time they get home, it would look just like hers. Yep. <laughs> the, I always found that it's a terrible thing to do to somebody, to especially to a creative to make them compare themselves to somebody else. Yeah. I know it just, it's an unfair thing to do. So you wouldn't do that to a child. Why do it to yourself? I had an entire motorcycle that I painted with lace. Oh yeah. I remember. That. <laughs> <laughs> and I got second in my category for custom motorcycles. Yeah. And the only reason I didn't get first is because the guy that was ahead of me had a Western theme on his bike mm -hmm. and he had brass pieces engraved. He, like he spent a lot of money on this bike. Yeah. And I spent, uh, 30 bucks. And the curtains out of my dining room. <laughs> they were my curtains <laughs> out of my dining room. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. Yep. It got me second place. Yep. And all I did was spray black on white. Yep. It was brilliant. Oh, no. It was white on black. White Sorry. on black. Yeah. And I got some custom parts done up just for to clean it up a bit. And yeah. I think I spent maybe $200 painting that bike. Uh -huh. And I didn't even clear coat it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't even put a satin clear on it. Uh -huh. It was kind of like, yeah, yeah, I got a bike show to go to. Yeah. I forgot I had to do a bike up for that. I'm entered. So this will work. We're going to <laughs> we're going to add some highlights to our lettering, and I'm going to do that with heavily thinned warm white. You can use the light buttermilk too. Either one will work. And you're going to put. I'm using a, a round to do this. You're just going to put a line of the highlight op opposite the shadow. So if the shadow was on the left or the right side, then the highlight's going to go on the left. And it's just that heavily thinned warm white. Do I have pictures? Ooh. Do I have pictures of that bike? I don't know. I don't know, but my phone is going, oh, yeah, you like Salvador Dali, eh? <laughs> Did you know? 
No, stop it. I so would have... that little highlight is very watery. It is not solid or even bright. It's very watery. And again, it's not perfectly straight. We're just not worried about it. Then we're going to add a smaller highlight of just the brighter white like this. And I like to do it just on that vertical line. One little stroke of that bright white is going to make these letters stand out. Picture of that bike. And that's it for your highlights. This has a very loose, almost graphic type look to it. So it's not, um, not super smooth or perfect. So now I gotta find my fact is black. It keeps disappearing on me. Not sure how or why, but it does. Hmm. <laughs> oh, I do. I do have a picture of it. There's actually one Sean took. This is the the tractor seat Honda. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right, too. Yep. <laughs> Left hand. Okay. Oh, yes. The heathen driving it. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. That was the lace. It's not a really great photo, though. No. It doesn't I, show I'd the lace. To... Yeah. Anyway. So you can see this character. You can't really see the pattern, but it is, it is cool. It is lacy. Yep. Smoke hanging out of your mouth. I'm yeah. really glad you gave that up. <laughs> yep. So, um, I'm going to take my Factus Black, and this is where I remove those graphite lines. And the first thing you're going to notice when you get them off is that the edges of this flower becomes very soft, almost indistinct. <laughs> because I just painted up to the edge of that. I didn't go over it. And so this flower really takes on that watercolor effect. It looks very soft and delicate, it loses that hard edged appearance. And then I do the same thing to your leaves. You may find wherever the acrylic went over, you might have a little trouble getting that uh, that line off, but it's mixed media. A, l a few of them here and there isn't going to be a big deal. But I love how this takes on that sort of watercolory look the minute that graphite line is gone. Look how pretty that is. And then make sure your lettering is dry before you attempt this, but... And then you do the same thing to your lettering. Again, you're going to notice that the lettering takes on a softer appearance because that was hard graphite lines are gone. And look at that. I love how this looks. Now you can go in, in a few places and add a little bit of detail if you so desire. Uh, you can do that with a little Diox purple and add... Um, a few little strokes in there so if I really wanted some finer details I could do that with a nice fine liner and just put in a few little lines like so just to deepen that a little bit if you really wanted to you could do that with a bright yellow with a more opaque yellow if you wanted a little change of color in there I really like how this just has that sort of simple floral feel to it. it it very watercolory i love that look so we're going to do a couple of things to finish this up one of the things we're going to do is that stamp now in the big one this one here i have the stamp down here that doesn't mean that that's where it has to go so in this case because we're working on a smaller surface i could put it right here looks a little crowded there Feels a little crowded there. Or just half of it. Or, uh, yeah, I could do that too. Could tear it off at the bottom. Or I could use a smaller stamp. 
This little one down here with the butterfly on it would be fine. There you go. Just the only reason I chose these particular stamps is for the coloration in them. Um, I wanted something that was going to fit into. Met my husband. He had a chopper. It was 1969. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Easy Rider. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Easy Rider was his favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Easy Rider. 1969. Yeah. It is a good movie. And the bikes in there are gorgeous. But then again, that was the style of the day. Yep, it was. Okay, so the stamp I've got here is from Papua New Guinea. I rather like that one. It could go here. It's got a there. bit of a purple to it. And it has a purple tone, sort of marries to that. This one was sheer luck. When I found this one, I found that purple iris in there. That's the only reason I used it is because the purple tied to the flower. But I rather like this one, this little butterfly one. It also ties the design element, butterfly to butterfly, which works well too. Or running it off the piece. Or running it off the piece if you want to. Mm -hmm. You can place this wherever you like. Kind of like, you know, kind of like that. I like that look. Sort of brings the eye down here not bad she she is very into the rule of threes i i like balance yeah <laughs> balance <laughs> is very important um but again you can it's also in finding something that's appropriate to the size or the scale of the piece that you're doing so this one worked well for me for this i kind of like it in here looks a little crowded though but let's pull this down here and see what we get. The neat part is that I can look over at the screen and see how it looks. When it's right under your nose, it's a different story. But it could go up here. Oh, I like that. What do you think? Yeah. Still makes your eye walk through still the whole image. The, yeah, it still pulls the eye in. Oh, yeah, I like it up there. I like it up there. So I'm going nothing to. Nothing says it has to be straight. No, absolutely not. I It's <laughs> just a me thing, the fact that I put it on that way. So I'm going to apply a coat of. I need my small brush. Where is it? There it is. Okay. I'm going to put a coat of matte medium right here. Like so. How about another mixed media, something that can use wine labels? Ooh, that'd be fun. Oh, there we go. I have some local wine labels. Why not? Yeah. That's something she'd be into. Yeah, I do like my wine stuff. <laughs> I like my wine. Yeah. So I'm going to brush a coat of that matte medium over top. You've got to bring back those wine holders. Oh, oh the... I remember those. Yep. Those were fun. So I'm going to dry this real quick. There's nothing to say you can't use one or two stamps. You can use as many as you want. I'm going to dry this really quick. And then I'm going to use my little sanding disc to remove that little extra paper. Just like that. So that it has a nice clean fin. Oh, I like that. Boom. Boom. Now I'm going to grab my stamp pad one more time. I'm going to add another and, stamp. Well, I have to cancel the stamp. Yeah, we don't want to ship it. <laughs> so I've got my little cancellation stamp. And I want to go over top of that stamp. I like the idea of it being canceled on this <laughs> i just have a thing for those stamps i'm not sure why <laughs> so now we want to age the edges of this this is how i do this this is fun stamp pad. i'm going to use the stamp pad and uh, don't forget to rub a little aggressively into that corner because i like how that age rounds things out quite nicely And then, there we go. 
Now, the more... What's the roly-poly method? The what? You take the, the brush and you roll it along the edge. Or something. Oh, that sort of a chipped paint effect. Oh, yes. That was the, for chipped paint. So, I, I like this effect, though, because it's just, it has more of a worn appearance as opposed to a broken one. <laughs> and it gives you a nice finish. I like the look of it. And because it uh, stays on, it's permanent. It's not coming off of there. Stays on stamp pad. Yeah, somebody asked. Somebody just asked, what brand of stamp pad is that? It's a stays on black. I'm going to dry this real quick. The stays on does dry fast. Um, and Kate52 with a $20 donation for the puppers. Oh, nice. $20. That's a bag of food. And it's a bag of food for the puppies and kittens down yep. at the local SPCA. Thank you very much, Kate. Thank you. Greatly uh, appreciate it. Wow. It says Kate52, but we know her name. I just can't remember. Because we <laughs> <laughs> we've had to ship stuff to you before. Yeah. I, I apologize. I deal with a lot of names on a daily basis. <laughs> So Half I've the got. Time I can't remember my own. We've got all of our elements in, but we're going to do one more quick thing. Um, I've got a couple of spots here that I just want to put a scribbly line on because I just like how that looks. That's just a me thing. If it's not to your taste, that's okay. You don't have to do this part. I just take my gel pen. I like to add a little soft, scribbly, sketchy line. To this it's not perfect i don't want it to be perfect perfect is boring i just like how it looks that's all da -da -da -da. and then we're going to take a little bit of lamp black paint and we're going to spatter this a little bit just because I like spatter. I like how it looks. Yeah. Our local SPCA had it rough this winter. Yes. Um, because of COVID and all that, they actually couldn't get their roof redone. <sighs> and they've been dealing with leaks and stuff like oh that. Oh, my goodness. So all their funding the last couple months have been going towards a new roof. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, I do keep up with this stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So they've not had an easy go of it this yeah. past winter. So. Um, however, all the animals that were at the our local SPCA went yep. over to the other one just down the road yep. near the military base. Yep. And luckily, they start they took care of the everything from there while they got their new roof. Yep. So I'm just giving this a light spatter with some lamp black, just because I like how it looks. I just it gives it a nice little visual texture, no, ages it, and that, as they say, I think is that. Too fini. Too fini. C'est fini. C'est fini. So I'm gonna dry this real fast, so that I don't smear black paint. Uh, for a more agier look, could you uh, base coat with a creamier color? You could. Um, I want. I actually liked the lighter element of this, and relied more on the uh, the aged edge, and the spattering to give this more of a vintage look or more of, and keep it light and airy. Um, I didn't want the colors in the background to be too dull because I wanted this flower to really pop off of the surface. So, I stayed away from using um, heavily antiqued. You know, a lot of dark browns and things like that. I kept it as light as I possibly could. There, there, there's, there's a food truck near you that sells lobster rolls. Where? Uh, Jerry says, our local Humane Society is having a food truck fest today, fundraiser. Oh, my. Uh, I'm planning on hitting the lobster dogs truck. <laughs> lobster dogs. Oh, my goodness. Lobster rolls. So, um, I just wanted you, the reason I did mine on this arched panel was because, one, 
I that line drawing for the arch panel is in there. And two, I wanted you to see how nicely that that converts from one surface to the other. It works really, really well. So it does translate very nicely to a different surface. So it came up. I really like this one. I think it's quite pretty. So this is on the tombstone panel, and this one is on the 6x12. The tombstone is the 6 and a half by 10 I think it is. Yes. And we have this one. We have lots of these in stock. We also have the 8x10s, which is another surface that this really looks good on, is that 8x10. So we have both of those. We do have some more of these panels coming. They're I both items. Them. They both turned out really nice. I'm uh, I'm very pleased with that. What type of sealer would you use? Uh, me, I am very typical of me. Out to the garage it goes and it gets two light coats of DecoArt's matte spray. And then for my finishing varnish, I usually use the DecoArt Ultra Matte Varnish, the okay. DuraClear Ultra Matte. Time to switch cameras. <laughs> turned out really nice. <laughs> And right we on. still have another wheel, another yes, prize to give we away. Yes, still got another prize to give. Yep. Yeah. Goodies, goodies, goodies. And I gotta make this smaller. <laughs> make this one bigger. So I had way too much fun with these this week. Um, it's another one of those things that kind of, I got a little out of control. When it comes to doing it more times than not i usually think of things in threes and fours uh simply because i like groupings i like to be able to think oh well that'd be pretty if it was done in fours it's not unusual for me to get carried away as the eight by eight florals or any indication because i don't know how many of those we did i think we're at 13 at this point and i still have more ideas more. so <laughs> more um this series I had line drawings for the tulip. I had line drawings for the daffodil and for the iris. For whatever reason, I started with the iris and then I played with, I wanted to see how it was going to come out. And then I just got completely carried away <laughs> and, and did all three of them. So I've had a productive week, I like to think. Aw. Linda Sofrango says, I want to say thank you for all all of you and your prayers and wishes this week yes miss linda is um had a difficult week this week with the loss of a friend and and an anniversary of sorts too so she's had a difficult week uh, she has been an absolute beacon of positivity if you've been on the group page the facebook page yeah. every single day she's got a positive message on there it's just so fantastic to see and everybody's been posting their finished pieces from the f the vintage fruit labels they're beautiful and never mind the fact that they she just had tornadoes and stuff around oh her. yeah they had hell of like storms and everything down yeah. there it was just horrendous so um linda we've been thinking about you we know you've had a tough week so hopefully you know that we you've been on our minds a lot this week linda is one of our uh, moderators um, for the YouTube channel. She is also one of the moderators for my Facebook group. Um, she does a tremendous amount of work for us um, You're busy. as far as promoting and, and just in general. She's just been awesome. Uh, awesome. So, so, so we do send her stuff every once in a while. Yeah. She, get, she gets happy mail from time to time. <laughs> she's such a good egg. And um, same with Jessica. Same with Jessica. Jessica's phenomenal. She's just always upbeat and positive and very supportive of everybody in the group and on the YouTube channel. She's just amazing. Yeah. Uh, Miss Sandy is not with us today because she is in Orlando, Florida at the NAPTA wow. and Creativation trade show and conference. She's down there doing product demonstrations for DecWart. Um, my pals at Dynasty Brush, Veronica Tui and Greg Mink are... Uh, Awesome. Down there as well. <laughs> They're in Orlando doing their thing, selling brushes. So uh, we do have Dynasty brushes in these giveaway giveaways today, too. So there's uh, a faux squirrel brush. Poor Deb. There. Yep. Deb, Deb got stuck. <laughs> they, I guess they had a landslide. rock slide or <laughs> landslide or something out there. So she's sort of landlocked. Landlocked. Yep. She's in the middle of... Well, isn't she between two lakes anyway? Yeah, she is. I mean, there's worse places on the planet to be stuck. <laughs> yeah. I've been there, Deb. It's a beautiful area. I could live there. <laughs> if not just for the canal. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just so he can lay in the inner tube and float down the river. Yeah. I'm just, ah. Uh... <laughs> Okay, so uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this that you enjoyed doing this one. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to fire me off a message through the message system on my website. There's a little speech bubble on the front homepage in the lower right-hand corner. Click on that, sends messages right to me. I answer them as quickly as I possibly can. I am not on Messenger all that often. So <laughs> if you have a, a question regarding an order, something, please contact me through the website because it could be days on end before I get to a message on Messenger. I really don't spend a whole lot of time on there. Um, did you finish your owl? No, I have not finished my owl. I haven't had time to work on it. I'm lately. thinking she might do that tonight. I don't know. <laughs> it, so, maybe. Maybe. But. Um, all right. We got to spin the wheel. Go ahead and spin it. Okay. So while that's yeah. spinning, I'll tell you that we've got, uh, there's a bunch of things on sale. The brayers are on sale. The uh, collage papers are on sale. Uh, there, 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 there's a bunch of stuff on there. Who do we got? Who do we got? Oh, oh. Read. Yay! Miss Faye. Miss Faye's getting a Faye. goodie box. Or envelope, in this envelope. case. So Faye Reed, she's just down the road here, so I might... Really? One of these days, shock the daylights out of room. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so, yes, Faye, we will get, I have your shipping information, sweetheart. And I will uh, pack this up, get that out to you on Monday. In the meantime, if you're looking for the collage papers, the brayers or what have you, we have them all on sale on there. Oh. We have a ton of swag came in in the last week. So the orders going out this week have got everything in them from, I mean, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. We've been sending out uh, pens and buttons and keychains and God knows what else in the last few days. So uh, don't be surprised when there's a few little extras tucked in with your shipment. Um, What else? Is there anything else? Next know. week. We're doing sweet peas. Sweet peas. And we have finally. Yep. Yeah, finally. <laughs> and we have some really great uh little giveaways uh from Tombo for next week. So, yeah. Yeah. So all right, guys, that is it for us this week. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, you guys are amazing. If you aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit the big red subscribe button and um uh, and join us here every Saturday from 12 noon Eastern Standard Time to whenever we decide to quit. <laughs> <laughs> or you can click the blue join button. Uh, yeah, you can click the blue join button and join my paid membership group. We have all kinds of perks for you. Lots of freebies, lots of free classes, patterns, etc. Plus access to all of the members only videos that we have available from previous classes, plus the new ones coming up. So... <gasps> I think I've hit everything. <laughs> uh, did we do enough plugging of our... I think so. Yeah. If you're wondering who are supporters of this channel are, they are Dynasty Brush at thebrushguys.com. We have a coupon code for the Brush Guys. Don't forget to uh, go there to check out, see which brushes they have, and then use the coupon code TRACYM. It'll give you an additional discount off of anything that you purchase there. Uh, we have a coupon code for Sandy McTeer's website as well. It's TRACYM as well. And have one for uh, painting with Deb, which is TRACY10. So you can use any one of those coupon codes on any one of those websites. What else? Any coupon codes for your website? We have a secret coupon code. Yes. They just have to look for it. You gotta find it. You gotta find it. It's there. But if you find it, please use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, that's it for us this week. Thank you so much for joining us and sticking it out with me while we played in some paint and had chatted and let our mouths run over. In the meantime, until next Saturday, we love you and please stay safe. As Bob Barker would say, spay and neuter your dogs. <laughs> And pet your dogs. Love your dogs. Love, yeah, hug and the puppers. Cats. And your cats. <laughs> and your horses. Or whatever animal you got at home. 